Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today we are going to take a look at how you can convert one of these halogen work lights over to LED. Now the biggest uh, reason I've decided to do this is one, these bulbs just they burn out super easy and you, it's almost like if you look at the thing funny they burn out and I actually only use this thing like a dozen times. I bought it a few years ago. I got it, it was like $10 and something at Walmart. Used it a couple times, and almost every time I used it, I had to put a new bulb in it. And on top of that, it was also extremely hot. The bulbs that go in these are um, um, 500 watt, if I remember right. Extremely hot. No, they are bright. I mean, this thing would light the whole backyard up. But no, it was just sitting there useless. Um, almost got thrown in the scrap. But uh, then I ran across these LEDs. They're 50 watts, extremely bright. And uh, this has already been converted. And it is now usable. Uh, granted, it is not as bright as the halogen was, but it is still really, really bright. Um, if you were using this in a garage to work on a vehicle or something, it's more than enough light. I mean, this thing is really bright. This is brighter than my treble light that has a 100 watt bulb in it. This is way brighter. Um, it's easy to do. It doesn't get as hot. Um, we are using the casing of the light as a heat sink for the LED. The LED does get the warm, a little hot, but uh, this thing does not get as hot as the halogen bulbs did. Nowhere near. And with the halogen bulb in here, you literally could cook an egg on the, the glass screen. With uh, the LED bulb in there, no, it's not going to happen. Um, what you'll feel is if you put your thumbs and hands on the back of it, you'll feel it's nice and warm. And that's it. Uh, you're not going to burn yourself. All right, uh, quick disclaimer before we get into building this. If you do decide to try to do this yourself, do so at your own risk, please. We are not responsible for any injuries, fires, accidents, deaths, whatever. This um, video is for educational purposes only, but it does work. And if you don't do it properly, stuff can happen. If you do do it properly, you'll probably be okay. But uh, like I said, if you try this yourself, do so at your own risk. So with that, well, let's just get started. So here's step number one. All right, well, the first step <clears throat> is going to be removing the fixture from the stand and taking the lens cover off the front. And actually take the lens cover off the front first. And, uh, well, some models you can do that. Other models you got to take it off the stand like mine here. Uh, so what you do first is take out your screw that holds the top on. Then you uh, most likely are going to have two bolts or screws down here that you need to remove. And then by removing that, the stand pulls off and then you can remove the lens cover. And set that to the side. And... Um, also, while you have this apart, it's a good time to uh, clean the lens cover because it's a lot easier. Um, you can pop the lens actually out of um, the casing and clean it up really good before you put this back together. So I do recommend that. All right, the next thing we need to do then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what we need to do is we need to remove the reflector. And on mine, there's just one screw in the back. I have seen some models that have two. And then I've seen some real cheap ones where they're just kind of clipped on, on the sides. So depending on your model, just remove that. Then inside of there, you're going to have the bulb holder. And we are no longer going to need that. So whatever screws are holding it in place, it's most likely two, like mine here. Take them out and then take your wire cutters and um, cut the wires off as close to the um, as close to the bulb holder as possible because you want uh, the wires as long as you can have them so you got enough room to um, and length to hook them to the uh, LED we're going to be putting in. Now that we have everything out of the way, well, you see. Um, 
we want the backing. Um, we're going to be using the case as the heat sink. So we want it as flat as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we're going to use some thermal grease in there as well. So at this point on mine, it's just a smidgen too narrow between those two posts. So I got to grind those off on the sides just a little bit. And then also um, I got to do a little grinding there in the middle to take that little tab down. So to do that, Dremel tool and... Well, then this is what it looks like. And this actually took me with the Dremel tool. It took me about 10, 15 minutes on it. It took a little time. But the Dremel was the easiest um, way to do this. And actually, mine isn't a name brand Dremel. It's a generic. Um, if you had a real Dremel, it would probably cut the time in half. But as you can see, I got everything uh, where the LED will now fit in there. And it's fairly flat. So then when we put the, uh, the LED in there, we uh, can put the thermal grease in the back and screw it down. So coming to that, well, next, you know, make sure your LED fits in there and then move on to the next step where we drill the holes. So mark your holes out and drill them. Once you have the holes drilled, um, flip over and look at the back side. You may need to... Um, there's going to be some little cooling fins on most models. And as you can see on mine, you have to actually uh, take the Dremel tool again and, uh, and uh, cut those down so that I can get the nut on the back side. So once you have that all done, then we can go ahead and solder the wires to the LED. Now these LEDs run on 120 volts. There's nothing else. I mean, you just solder the two wires and it don't matter which side goes which, the black, white, which side, just solder them on. Keep your leads extremely short. Actually, I mean uh, what you strip off for soldering on. Keep it as short as possible. And solder it on and then plug it in and test to make sure it works because you don't want to go through everything get everything all put together and find out you didn't solder it right and it's not working so at this point check that you've soldered it correctly all right from there then we can take um put our thermal grease now i've got these little tubes um syringes and these are each one is supposed to be enough for a computer heat sink i ordered a big package of like two dozen of them a couple years ago and i'm still using them and i found it took me on uh mine two of them and i squirted them on kind of smeared it around the back uh, kind of left it gooped towards the center heavier point and then worked my way out so when I put it in and we screw it down it squishes out and fills in all the little gaps and helps transfer the heat to the heat sink so then go ahead and uh, evenly you know put your screws or your uh, nuts and bolts on after you got the uh, thermal grease on and evenly tighten them down and make them snug uh, don't go he-man crazy because if there is some uh, warpage to your heat sink, you may bust something. Or when the thing does warm up a little, you might get a solder joint break loose. And the item will quit working. But uh, yeah, just take it easy. You don't have to super tighten them. Just enough. Keep them snug. And make sure, you know, you see a little grease squirt around the edges. Just a little. If you don't see any... Um, take it back out and put um, some more grease on there because that means you're you want to see a little bit that way you know that it's going to have good connection to the heat sink all right well after that then what we need to do is uh, put our reflector back together so take some 10 snips and uh, what I did is I flattened the reflector that was in there and you can see here in the picture I flattened it out then take your 10 snips and just cut that little uh, 
rectangle out of the middle, cut that out. Now we're going to need some epoxy. Um, I have some JB Weld. JB Weld works really good for this. Uh, whatever epoxy you're going to use, make sure it is going to handle a little bit of heat. Um, this thing isn't going to get super hot, but it is going to get uh, good and warm in there. <clears throat> so make sure it'll handle heat. Uh, JB Weld works perfect. This stuff I have here, it says Marine. JB Weld. The only reason I'm using that, I actually got this stuff at a garage sale for like a dollar. And I had it laying around. So I'm going to go ahead and use it for this project. I mean, it's epoxy. It's going to work. It'll handle some heat. Um, like I said, this, this thing is not going to get as hot as if you had the 500 watt halogen bulb in it. So... Then you do um, just kind of form them in there so they lay flat as you can. Uh, you got to kind of play around with it, and you'll see the picture. Um, once I let it set up overnight, you'll see the picture here in a few moments of how it kind of looks. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but um, you want to get the reflector in there because it will help reflect the light out a bit. So then you're going to want to let it sit um there is quick dry jb weld but this is the normal stuff so i'm going to let it sit overnight and um i'm just using some little uh, i got these little clamps are kind of like plastic clothespin thingies i'm going to use them to hold it down and i'm just putting a little dab on each of those sections and hold them in so all right tom well i'm going to let this sit overnight but for you it'll just be a couple moments so i'll catch you back here in just a few all right i've let this sit overnight and the epoxy has set up um little suggestion if i would have had some chrome spray paint i think instead of gluing them in there i would use that if you don't though just take the epoxy and do it this way here's a close-up of what it looks like this works, but I um, I think a little uh, chrome spray paint in there before you put the LED in might work a little better. But All right, well, everything's done. All that's left to do is to put it, the uh, the fixture back together. And beans, you've already taken yours apart. I'm sure you know how it goes back together, so I'm not going to waste your time showing you that. Uh, one suggestion, though, I was looking and doing some measuring. I'm going to be doing another one of these. I've tested this out. I plugged it in already, and it uh, I could get two of them LEDs in there. All I'd have to do is grind them posts off, and I've got a bigger angle grinder out in the garage. I wouldn't want to try using a Dremel for grinding them off. But then I could get two of those LEDs in there, because I plugged this in. It is bright. It is definitely now something I can use, because the way it was before, I wasn't wasting the money on the bulbs anymore. You'd, you put a bulb in, you move, after you plug it in, you move it half hour later, and the bulb, done. I mean, I was done with it. So now it is something that's usable. But I think I am going to, when I do another one of these that I have, I'm going to put two of them LEDs in there. And when I do that, I'll put a link in the description below. It, uh, it'll, it'll be a while, probably about a month or so before I get around to that, because I've got to actually order some more of these LEDs. And oh. If um, you don't know where to get these, also go look in the description below. There's a link to the web page for this project, which has some pictures and stuff. But uh, there will be some links on there on where you can get these LEDs. And they aren't that expensive. You're going to get one under $5. I would also, this was a 50 watt. I'm going to look and see if it's possible to get anything that's even a little bit brighter than the 50. But... I just stumbled across these, got a deal. I actually got a special deal on them that you normally ain't going to get because I was a first time customer and I think I paid like a dollar something for that. I ain't going to get that deal again. They're going to cost me around four, three, four dollars because I have a business account with the place. Most people are going to be paying about five for one of them. All right. Um, well, here's a picture of what it looks like finished. And while you're checking that out, uh, I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. Uh, if you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you go ahead and 
build this uh, project, go ahead and leave a comment on how it turned out for you. Uh, maybe you tried putting the two LEDs in there and how did it work? So go ahead and leave a comment. Um, consider subscribing. So, all right. Well, thanks for joining us here today. I uh, hope you have a great day and remember, have fun building.